Back to breaking news, President-elect Donald Trump just told the New York Times that he disavows a white supremacist group that's using his name to push its racist ideology. Uh, this comes after calls grew louder and louder for Trump to strongly condemn this meeting over the weekend of hundreds of white nationalists. They gathered in Washington, D.C. at the Reagan building. This is just a couple of blocks from the White House. You hear the cheers to cheer on Trump's victory with a Nazi salute. America was, until this past generation, a white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. It is our creation. It is our inheritance. And it belongs to us. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> Let's bring in CNN political commentator and Trump supporter Paris Denard. Also, Charles Kaiser is with us. He's a CNN.com contributor and the author of multiple books, including The Cost of Courage, the story of how one French family fought the Nazis during the Paris occupation. Gentlemen, welcome. And thank, uh, you. thank you. Charles, let me just begin with you. I mean, now that you're hearing, we're getting some of the, the information coming out of this New York Times meeting that Trump has disavowed this particular group. Is that enough for you? Well, I'm delighted that my uh, Mr. Trump has visited my alma mater at the New York Times and said that he doesn't want to do this anymore, but I want to give him a little advice for the future if he does not want to stimulate the alt-right. First thing, he should never retweet someone with the name White Genocide who lists his uh, address as Jew America. That's what he did in February. He should never ask his supporters again to give the Nazi salute, which he did at a rally in March. That's not a good idea. Uh, in July, I think it was a mistake. Wait, when to did retreat he say that? In, in March, he asked his supporters to raise and pledge their support to his candidacy and promise to vote for him. Okay. There's plenty of video of that. You can find that. And then, of course, in July, he retreated an image of his opponent with the uh, six pointed Jewish star on it. I thought that was a mistake. But we have bigger problems here. Also, in July, you know, he selected as his vice president the most homophobic man in American public life, a person who believes that gay people actually do not have the right to exist. And then, you know, if you don't want to support the alt-right, don't choose as a White House counselor, uh, counselor a man who uses the word nigger, whose wife says wow. that he did not want his uh, daughters to go to a school with too many Jews. And don't choose as an attorney general a man who calls the NAACP an un-American organization and who we learned in The Guardian today went so far as to prosecute uh, Charles, two can of the I just people. Hang on a second. I appreciate you going through all of this, but please don't use the N-word on my show. I'm sorry. Well, I, I never use Thank the N-word except when I'm quoting someone who's been appointed by the president to serve in the Oval Office since this is such a disgusting moment in our history. Um, let me go back to my original question. Currently, the fact that Mr. Trump has disavowed this group, is that enough? Well, you know, if actions speak louder than words, and all of his actions have been things that encourage groups like these, by appointing Jeff Sessions as attorney general, by appointing Bannon as a White House counselor. You can't do one thing and then expect the other to happen. And just peering into the camera on 60 Minutes and saying, don't do it, doesn't seem to be very effective. Paris, let me hear from you. Is it enough for you? First of all, Brooke, I appreciate you. Um making that comment about use, the utilization of the N-word. It's highly offensive and inappropriate, and I appreciate that. The second point is this. I believe it is enough. I believe that Mr. Trump has to say these things, not every single time, because you can't go down the list every time some crazy whack job on the far extremist white supremacy says something in support of you. But a gathering this large of people doing these things, which I think might be more of a PR political stunt is appropriate and it's the right thing to do. Looking into the camera is the right thing to do because at this point we how, can talk about what happened. How do you feel when he retreats? How do you excuse feel me, when sir, he retreats? Excuse me, sir. Like sir I did not interrupt how do you. you. Give me the that? respect I gave you. How do you feel and about so that? And so when I'm going to tell you right now, I believe it's appropriate that the president elect looks into the camera and says, this is inappropriate. Stop it. Because words matter. And he's now the president elect. And so he sets the tone. And the things that he's doing are the, it's, pro, it's appropriate 
and it's the right thing to but do. But what about I'm Steve Bannon? What about up. Steve Bannon, Paris? To Charles's point, yeah. in Breitbart, the most prominent platform for what we just showed, you know, the video we just showed, the, the Nazi salute, the, the white suprem uh, supremacists in this country, are you okay with having Steve Bannon as the chief strategist at the White House? Paris. Yeah, I, I'm fine with Steve Bannon being the chief strategist because I trust the president-elect's judgment. But I also know people who work for. Let me just let me just tell you a quick story. I was on this program on CNN. They were in the war, the war room of Trump headquarters. Steve Bannon was watching the show on CNN and said, "Who's that guy speaking on behalf of President of uh, uh, Mr. Trump?" Colleague said, "That's Paris Denard. I used to work with him in the White House." He said, "He's fantastic. We need pe more people like him speaking out." Let's help get him on our team as a surrogate. I know people at Breitbart in Los Angeles who have told me he happens to be Jewish American. His the two people in the office, one is Mexican American, the other one is African American. That's the Breitbart that I know. Those are the yes, people well, the that I know that work that we there. Know, the Breitbart and that so, we know is so, the one who sir, says your, that your interruptions shall... are inappropriate. And so the point is, there are people who work at Breitbart every single day. And look, I will be totally transparent. Are there things on Breitbart that I don't like that I think that should not be on there? Sure. But there's things that other things that are on Drudge Report that I don't like. There are people that you put on this program on CNN that I don't like. But it's a, it's a platform, and all we have the First how Amendment and about people's the tone points are put now, on How there. do you feel about the tone he's set by appointing an attorney general who was denied a federal judgeship because of extensive evidence that he is a racist? How do you feel about that? I think, first of all, I don't think you're the host of the show, so I'm not going to answer questions from you, but I will say the that point, a lot of The people point, feel and we made that, that point multiple times on the allegations. You're referring to Jeff Sessions in the late 80s, right. and he was denied the judgeship uh, in Alabama because of the allegations. He, I know, has refuted the claims that he is racist, but it's a point. It's a, it's a point taken from Charles' side. He's and denied that it. Will, I wouldn't say he's refuted it. Denied it, denied it, but, you know, that will make for yeah. uh, a contentious, potentially, uh, you know, confirmation sure. hearing. Sure. I think the e Brooke, I think the easiest thing to do is for people to talk about race and point or use the race card to try to divide this country. I think Senator Sessions is an honorable man. I think that he's doing a great job. And I know that this particular HBCUs, he's been a strong proponent of them. Many of them come from the South, and I know he represents them. And so I believe that he's going to be someone who's going to be confirmed. And we can go back and look at everyone's history. I'm sure the person sitting next to me uh, on this program has said some things that he would regret. But we have I to look forward. I think it's shameful that we any have to look African forward. American would support this man to be attorney general. It Sir, is you shameful. don't know why. You know what? I don't question your allegiance to the people that you support. I will tell you okay. why I support Mr. Trump, who's the president elect, because I think he's going to do good things for this country, and particularly good things for my community. How do you feel when All President All right, gentlemen, Trump, I'm gonna, we're, we're done. We're done. I appreciate Brooke, both your voices. You. I am still, the more I've sat here and listened to the fact that somebody used the N-word on this show, it is not okay. It is not okay, Charles Kaiser. I respect you. I enjoy having you on as a guest, but uh, not okay. By the way, uh, the claim uh, that, that, that Mr. Bannon used the N-word, I've never heard of this. So there's that. Take a break.